the longsword. And here is a reproduction of a longsword. Okay. Um, a longsword basically is a double-edged sword. Um, this one here is a blunt version, so I'm not going to kill myself, don't worry. Um, it's normally a double-edged sword. Um, degrees of sharpness really used to vary. Um, a lot of manuals say that what is really important is that this part here is sh the sharpest. And then some swords used to keep a slightly less sharp part towards this part here, also because the sharper the sword, the more fragile it will be. Okay, so we do need to keep in mind that. But you know, degrees of sharpness were still a matter uh, that hasn't been really resolved because it's something that really would change, it would have a lot of different possibilities and a lot of different um, preference. You know, it really has to do with personal preference. Um, again, medieval swords were definitely sharp and. A long sword, this one here, is basically a two-handed sword. As you can see, I can fit one and two hands here. Please keep in mind that one of the main problems with films and, uh, and video games is that people over-swing. And that's one of the things, okay? So when you have a sword like this in a really, you know, um, close quarter combat situation, you don't really want to do anything like this because first, it's slower. Second, it telegraphs your attack. So you kind of have... You, may, you help your opponent understand what you're going to do. So, instead of doing something like this, it is much more effective to go simply like this, you know, very quick and brief attacks. So here's another thing that a lot of people think that uh, um, medieval swords, particularly two-handed swords and bastard swords, bastard swords are the one, and, one hand and a half swords, okay? One and a half-handed swords. Um, a lot of people think that they're really, um, you know, heavy, Swords. Now, this replica here is a little bit too heavy, actually, because real ones normally wouldn't really, the, talking about long swords, normally they wouldn't really weight more than 1.8 kilos to 2 kilos maximum. And that would be the situation. Plus, one thing that a lot of people tend to forget is that when you ham, handle, you know, when you hold your sword with two hands, you basically have a lever. And that makes it a lot easier to move. Right? So, of course, some one-handed swords are faster to move around, but at the end of the day, I'll show you this. Now, this is obviously a very light sword, okay? So, if I hold it like this, and I do this, and then I do the same thing with this heavy one. Okay, it is slightly, um, it is slightly slower, but is it really that different? And then you can argue, yes, but there were bigger swords, okay? I'll show you a bigger sword. Now this is basically the bigger sword I have at the moment, and uh, let's see with this one now. It's actually so big that I can't even show you the whole sword in the thing, okay? So this is a big sword, but it's properly a long sword because there is a bit of distance between my two hands and that's actually easier to use. That makes it easier to use. So it is heavier, obviously, than the one I used before. As I show you the two swords, hilt and hilt, there is a basically this difference of blade, okay? So let's have a look. So one thing that really is difficult with a two-handed sword is not the idea of, of throwing an attack because that's not actually, you know, all that slow. This is not a slow attack, this is not a slow movement. The problem is when you have to recover from it, okay? So that takes longer. These are the standard grips, okay? The standard ways to grip a sword and wield it. But there are also some strange ones sometimes. With uh, manuals and medieval sources, we see um, knights holding a sword like this, okay? And we are talking about a sharp sword. This one is not sharp, obviously, but we're talking about a sharp sword. So why would they do that? The first thing that comes into 
So first thing to mind is, why would you ever want to grab your, your own sword's blade if the edges are sharp, you're going to cut yourself? Um, no, because we need to remember that knights were using armour, mitten, gloves, gauntlets, okay? It's metal. You're never going to cut through metal. So you can hold it, grab it, and even use it like this. So why would I do this? Because it gets a lot more power, thrusting power. And that's what you need when you're trying to fight an opponent who is wearing metal armour. We're talking about solid steel. But one thing that you can do is when you hold it like this, is the idea of having a bit more choice and maneuverability. So it's easier to find those little places of, of plate armor that are at places of the body, parts of the body, that are not covered with plate armor, but only have chain mail, or only have leather, for example. The armpit, for example, is one of those, and, or maybe the throat, in, depending on, on the kind of armor we're fighting. So this would give us a lot more power and precision. precision. So this is why they would do this. Another one that is actually interesting is this. And again, why would you do this? Because with this you can, it becomes a percussion. And that's what you want when you're fighting a um, full plate armoured opponent, a knight. Um, I think that this is good enough for this first video and I'll do some more videos on, on swords and please make sure to watch them. So if you like this video please thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.